Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment. I do hope that whether you're a student, a parent, or an educator, you'll get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC. Secondly, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned. And lastly, to become aware of some common ways to earn points and the pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. Topic for this podcast is the strategies for responding to a research and explore prompt. As a quick note, beginning with the class of 2015 and later, students will be required to pass the biology EOC as part of graduation requirements. So as you look at the three types of questions on the EOC, you'll see that there's three categories, multiple choice, completion, and short answer. It'll be the short answer category that we focus on in this podcast series. Of the seven short answer item types, we'll be looking at the research and explore prompt. And then to uh, make sure that we understand a few words before we go forward, uh, the word research can be described or defined as a careful or diligent search, the collecting of information about a certain subject. To explore means to investigate, to study, or to analyze. And then scientific information is knowledge that's obtained from an investigation a study or instruction commonly referred to as data. So here we have a practice scenario titled Blueberry Blues and you'll see that uh, there is a range of questions that relate to this scenario and basically we have a research and explorer prompt where Jose and Tasha noticed last year that the blueberry plants in their neighborhood garden had many flowers but produced only three kilograms of berries. They wanted to change the garden so that the blueberry plants would produce more blueberries this summer while making the changes to the garden, Jose and Tasha documented the stages of their design process as follows. Their problem was to change the neighborhood garden so the existing blueberry plants will produce more blueberries this year than, than last year. And then the research problem was um, what do the blueberry plants need to grow to be healthy and to produce ber berries. And so you'll see that there is a list of uh, needs that the plants have with their proposed answers. And then you'll see there's a uh, checklist of things under the explore ideas. And so research the problem and explore ideas is really the heart of this kind of prompt. And you'll see at the very bottom, a plan summary has been given. So basically this is a series of steps that they can do to um, solve the problem of increasing the quantity or the mass of the berries that these plants produce. So they think it has to do with uh, bees and other plants in the nearby area that would then attract the bees so that more uh, pollination would occur. So as we look at the uh, setup here, there's a quick uh, set of steps to do and then there's a picture of the of the problem and the solution. So we have a, a bee house on a pole that's home to bees and then there'll be lavender plants in the area that would uh, keep the bees in the area. And so their uh, test solution and test results are included there. And so this is all background to the prompt that follows. So in this case, the student on the EOC is being asked to do two things. One is to research the problem, which is to describe any scientific information needed to solve the problem and how to collect that information. And then secondly, to explore ideas, which means to describe several possible solutions to the problem, including any useful scientific concepts. So let's unpack this uh, two-part prompt and see how we can do this. So as you look at the attribute list for this prompt, there are four points to be earned um, in terms of attributes, and then the score points are a maximum of two. So in the first attribute, research the problem, uh, some questions to ask yourself. One is, did you include information needed to solve the problem? And then did you ask uh, relevant questions, such as what type of soil do worms survive in and how much water do they need, etc.? The second attribute would be scientific research. So again, ask yourself, did you identify related scientific information? So if uh, worms are the root cause of this problem, then what diseases might kill off the worms or what predators of the worms, like for example, birds may be in the area that would cause the worm population to decrease. Uh, what do worms eat? So what do they need to be um, given for their diet? Did you describe the data to be collected scientifically? So is there a 
a person or a, or a resource in the in the area that you can go to to learn more about what you don't know. Uh, and I think the point here is you're not being asked to be an expert on worms or blueberry plants, but can you go through a logical systematic process, step-by-step -step process, where you can um, ask the questions and then determine where you could find, the, find these answers. A couple notes on this. Uh, scientific information involves uh, relevant general concepts. For example, the food chain, which is predators, um, diseases, environmental needs of different worm species. And then additional to that, um, I would say that scientific information and the collecting of it in, is systematic, so it happens very regularly. It happens um, in, in a planned sense. In addition to that, um, it usually occurs over a range of time, so maybe over a week or a month. The third attribute is to explore ideas. So did you include two or more ideas that could solve the problem? So here the idea is just thinking of different possibilities. So don't get stuck on one thing. And again, um, the more things you put down, the more uh, opportunity there is for you to earn that point. So did you add compost? So for example, dead and decaying matter like um, lawn clippings or um, a brush that's been cut back. Um, and did you add that into the soil to add nutrients? Did you add water to keep the soil mo moist? Uh, did you bring in uh, a new crop of young worms? Um, so these would be multiple ideas that are trying to solve the problem. And then lastly, explore scientific ideas. Did you describe one or more scientific concepts to keep in mind when researching and exploring a solution? So this step is really an extension of the previous step. So can you show deeper understanding, deeper questioning as to not only what the idea is, but what's the science behind the idea? And so we'll see how this plays out in some of the uh, student responses. So in this case, if you were to add dark mulch on top of the soil. So as we look at the two-point response, you'll see that both the, the part A and part B of the response are given. And then when we break it down to grade it, uh, did they research the problem? Yes. They asked uh, several good questions about the um, soils that worms prefer and what's the temperature that's preferred, how much water do they like, in this case, um, the, Jose and Tasha didn't know the answer to themselves, so they went to someone who might know, so they would go to their science teacher. Alternatively, you could go to um, a pet store, or you could go to a local zoo, uh, lots of different resources to find out more information that um, you don't quite know yourself. Uh, did they explore ideas? Yes, they covered with pl black plastic. They added compost for food. And then the last uh, attribute, explore scientific ideas, is they linked covering black plastic to increasing the temperature. And so that's how they earned their four attributes, which calculated into two score points. Uh, one point response you'll see listed here. And as we look at the um, scoring rubric, we'll see that they earned um, two of the four attributes for a total of one score point. So they did discuss what's needed to research the problem and finding out uh, what the worms like to eat and also what the temperature is preferred. Uh, they, add, they had a vague response in terms of scientific research. So they did say ask a master gardener, but they didn't tell what they were going to ask. So if they said ask a master gardener how many worms are in uh, a cubic meter of soil when um, plants are growing well in that soil, that would be specific. In that case, they would probably earn that scientific research point. They did uh, receive credit for Explore Ideas, talking about um, the moisture content for worms and then adding sand to the soil. But they received nothing for the scientific ideas because they didn't explain why the sand may be beneficial to worms. So if they had discussed that, linked it to a scientific concept, then that might be uh, an improvement. And then lastly, we have a zero point response, in which case not much is being added here. So there's not a lot of uh, text to look at. And you'll notice that only the first point was given for the researching the problem. Uh, and really, this isn't a uh, scientific response, finding out where to buy worms. You could buy worms all day long. That doesn't mean that you're doing science. 
And so really the question is how can you sustain worms living in a particular area which then would have a direct benefit on um, the plants that you're trying to grow. So in, in the last three attributes, no points were earned because there wasn't really much content given. So again, we're really looking at what is a problem, figuring out what needs to be uh, researched in order to create a solution, and then go through the various ideas that um, relate to that solution, and then trying to connect it to some scientific concept. So as we wrap up here, a couple takeaways uh, to think about. One is that students frequently fail to explain the questions to ask in step one, researching the problem. And so what I would do is just do a, a brainstorm, you know, even from, a, from your point of view, what do you need in terms of um, nutrients and food, shelter, water to live, and then try to connect that to other living organisms. Uh, another takeaway is that students also struggle to earn the scientific research attribute because they're not being detailed enough in explaining the research to do. And so, again, there's, there's lots of different places you could go. You could look on Google for a specific answer to a question. You could go to someone that you um, have confidence in that they would know the answer. Maybe it's a, a science teacher or a local uh, beekeeper. And so I think the point here is um, not to be expected to know everything, but simply to uh, know where to ask to get the right answers. And then the last takeaway is that if you copy the whole scenario, that doesn't show independent thought, and therefore the points will not be awarded. Um, you can use uh, certain stages or, or, or sections from the, the scenario and still earn credit. Um, that does still show that you have the ability to think critically um, on your own. But again, don't copy the whole uh, scenario because that's an easy way for you to get zero points. So that uh, wraps up this podcast. I, I appreciate you uh, joining in. And hopefully uh, through this podcast, you saw that the Research and Explore short answer prompt has four attributes, and you must score all four of them to earn maximum points. You also saw three sample student responses, each of which earned different scores from a maximum of two points to a minimum of zero. And these points were based on how well they matched the scoring guide. And then lastly, you learned how to avoid simple mistakes that might cost you points when responding to this item type. Please direct any of your comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. Once again, thanks for joining in, and I hope this helped.